Dr Priya Chadha, Director of Acquisition Aesthetics Training Academy, talked us through what inspired her to go into aesthetic practice. Honest answer to this is, I fell into medicine rather accidentally because I've got two siblings who were both medics and I just sort of copied and in true Priya fashion I didn't do my due diligence to see what else I might want to do and I was good at sciences so I fell into it. And so once I was in medicine, again in true Priya fashion, I was very impatient and wanted to figure out what I wanted to do really early. So in my second year of medicine I started doing small electives and everyone else was having a great time and I did a bit of obs and gynae and loved the obs and hated the gynae and then I did a bit of general surgery and then I did plastic and I really enjoyed it. And I found like-minded people and a family that I thought I could belong with. Again, the off-piste answer, I really like the concept of beauty, attractiveness and confidence. And I really love, truly, hair and makeup. So I always used to say to my parents, if I don't do medicine and it doesn't work out, I want to do hair and makeup. And so that now, I can piece that all together, being good at the sciences and hair and makeup and beauty and things like that. I can understand now how it's all translated into aesthetic medicine. And aesthetic medicine, truly, I feel very at home. Um, perhaps even more so sometimes than plastic surgery, but I think that's the easiest non-job interview answer of how I fell into it. You know, the job interview answer was, of course, I was a you know, medic and became plastic surgery and then naturally reconstructed plastic surgery and aesthetic medicine paired together. And the, you know, But the truth really be told, it's just what I fell into because I enjoyed it. Um, and aesthetic medicine came around you know, 25 years ago, but when I got into it 12 years ago, exactly when I needed it to, because I was a bit lost in the treadmill of becoming a surgeon. And actually, it's something I'm phenomenally passionate about and um, fits really great with my personality, I think. Essentially, I actually spoke about um, the concepts of aesthetic medicine and training in aesthetic medicine and all you need to know, but I actually did it from a bit of a different angle, which was rather than objectively giving you a list about the courses or the places or the types of technologies or the modalities of learning, small group, large group, you know, online, practical, etc. Rather than doing that, which I think has been done quite a lot, I actually went down the route of the concept of finding your tribe, wherever that might be or whoever that might be for the best environmental learning. So actually, I think it's better to advocate that you find your tribe and who you're going to best learn from in terms of providing good training. Because really, when you're looking for training academies or indeed training in aesthetic medicine, and you look in the top places, all of the training academies, and I would say this about my colleagues, are really worth going to. They're all very good in terms of the top three or four or five in the UK. And so really, you've got to go one step more than that and say, if they're much of a muchness and if the training delivered is all quite good and they're all keeping up with each other in terms of their course offering and the way that they deliver it, which you know they really are, we all really are, then actually now you've got to go one step further to saying who's going to create the best learning environment, who will be the best tribe for me to connect with, be vulnerable with and therefore improve my learning and who's going to create a platform for me to continue growing. And that's a very different question to who's got the most awards and who's the best training academy. So I was saying that actually Daniel Coyle and Brene Brown, who are just two incredible authors and speakers, um, constantly go on about the concept of connection and the fact that actually human life and, and what we do is meaningless without connection. That applies to work, home life, family life. The second is vulnerability. And the third, which is so strong and a, and a determinant of how well you'll do, whatever well success means to you, is um, belonging cues in regards to whether you belong to that tribe, whether they make you feel belong, belonging, and actually will they foster your growth in your learning. And that inevitably will determine how good your training is for you and how success is determined, how successful you will be. Nothing will replace practice, practice, practice. And that is what it is. It's an apprenticeship in practice, that's for sure. But now, because of safety and, and the nature of what we do, you cannot practice, in my opinion, without a community. Uh, and that means one person, 10 people, training, whatever that might be, a community to feedback, critique, improve, and also promote your confidence if it's a great result, whatever it might be, but to learn from. So there is no substitute for practice and learning. 
continued learning. And actually, I always say now with what we have available to us in AI, online webinars, conferences, you know, ABC and things like that, there's a plethora of things. So there's no excuse for not continuously learning. That's theory and then applying it has to be your practice. Feedback, growing on the feedback um, and advancing your techniques. And the rate that aesthetic medicine is growing at and the acceleration it's got means you'll never keep up with it by the definition. And so there's only one way to go, which is up. So try not to have inertia or fear. Try to really get stuck in in a safe way with a community or group that will support you to do that. That choice has to be made by themselves. And as a benchmark, I still undergo training. You know, I still go and learn from people globally. I still spend time with my colleagues and contemporaries and speakers that are really wonderful and injectors and plastic surgeons and people from other specialties in order to learn. If you stop being inquisitive and stop learning, you are absolutely without fail, by definition, going to hit a ceiling and you will never know what you could achieve or how good you could be. So in terms of continuous learning, in, in my head, there's no debate about it. And because the specialty is new, we're still in our first 30 years, the learning that's going to happen and going to be needed is going to be far more significant. One won't be able to keep up with the rate of it. We'll get quite waylaid. We'll probably need to hone in on certain areas because it's a huge specialty that's going to expand. So in regards to the concept of do you need to keep learning the answers Yes, and there's, there's not much question in that for me. It's like saying, do you need to learn in, in any other areas of your life? We're constantly learning, and it might be subliminal, but we are. And thereafter, because the specialty is evolving and growing so much, you're going to have to keep up. You'll soon be out of fashion or out of touch, and actually you'll be doing the incorrect thing. The question really becomes, is the incorrect thing going to lend, uh, land you in hot water? And that's going to be a lot of trouble. And in terms of HCPs and responsible HCPs, that's not an option. It, it, that cannot happen. It's really important that you protect yourself with training, legal protection, insurance, whatever it might be, in order to not end up in that situation because that is not a good place to be. depends on what your version of a good practitioner is personally and thereafter there are certain attributes but patient safety outcomes techniques continued learning and then somewhere along the line of your medical hat on you've got to mix it with the business.